cloudy day here. And some days we can see the mountains up in the Olympic Peninsula. Hi, I'm in my uh, <clears throat> art studio in Pioneer Square section of downtown Seattle. It's uh, August uh, 13th or 14th, 1994, and I wanted to uh, show some of you who are on the East Coast and elsewhere what I'm doing. The um, images on the frame I took from the um, prayer book printed in Jerusalem that I got from my bar mitzvah that has all these uh, images uh, hand tooled into the metal cover. I think Jerry's I'm going to take my cue from you, Akiva. If you sure. start talking about something else, sure. I'll move. Sure. Jerry's going to move to the right of that onto the wall where uh, a good 10, 12 of the drawings in the series are. Which one are you at now? I'm on that bunch over there. Okay. The one in the upper left is the mirror of tram car drawing that I did which in late 91, which began the series. Mirna was a street in the ghetto which no longer exists. And uh, it was several months after I began the series that I came across Israel Birnbaum's book, My Brother's Keeper, a survivor from Warsaw who lived in Queens. And he, uh, and I got his book and read that he grew up on Muranovsky Street, and that's when I decided to write him. Um, the next drawing to its right is uh, Man with a Tattered Coat, the second piece I did in the series. Um, are you going across this way? I'll do whatever you want. I can follow you. Sure. Come closer to me so I can get your voice better. Sure. I'm going to have Jerry uh, focus in on individual pieces and I'll describe who they are or what, what they are. The piece uh, below the mirror of tram car is called uh, Child with Quilt. I if I get a lot of reflection here from here. Keep on talking. Child with Quilt is the first piece I've actually ever done in my career, including student years, that I've collaged fabric on. And as you see, it's uh, it's pen and ink drawing with the child's head and watercolor and gouache in the quilt area below and the left and right of his head. And I've stitched uh, shapes of uh, leaping ponies or dogs, they're supposed to be. And his wings are ink and uh, the collage fabric. Below that child is the most recently completed piece, uh, one of two of Seattle uh, linkage. This is uh, a woman named Sesha. She died at age 33 during the uprising, and she was the great aunt of uh, uh, an acquaintance of mine here in Seattle, and whose grandmother moved. The woman in Seattle, his grandmother moved to, see, to the States in 27, and her siblings stayed in Warsaw. This was her youngest, the grandmother's youngest sibling. I just finished the piece recently. And we'll move up here. And that's Man with Tattered Coat, the second piece in the series. To its right is uh, Child with Soup Plate. Have, um, father with daughter next to that. I had a, it was one of the first pieces where I added some color, a little touch of color in there. A bit poignant piece, a lot of people really relate to that. Daughter, especially.
cryptic two-part uh, piece. It's from the Judenrat issued um, identification papers, actually a work permit, it's in Polish and German, of a man named Friedrich Zellmann who died uh, in the uprising. Uh, and I got the uh, photocopy of the identification papers from YIVO in New York, June of 93. And the piece was completed recently, except for the wings, which are... I decided since I drew the first one by hand, I would do the second one by hand also. Okay. Did you get the uh, ID paper itself? You could go into this uh, scene in the Warsaw Ghetto here. That was a, a typical street scene in the ghetto after it was sealed off. And to its writer, two of the three photographs I used of Jews jumping their deaths during the uprising, I surmised to avoid capture or to avoid burning to death and to control the fate of their own deaths. They were used, here's the one man here, the other one is here, kind of a blur, and they were drawn in respectively drawn image. And the third photo had this woman who was very sharp in the photo, sharply defined folds on her coat and scarf and boots, jumping also to her death. Many viewers have been particularly moved by this piece because, among other things, they see falling and uh, ascending within the flight. Which, and the, the imminent appearance of the death there, I think, has, has moved many, many people who have seen it. Uh, was this one done already? No. Yes? No. no? Okay. This is an uh, old man being helped to walk by a young man carrying a container. Uh, the old man's arm is going into, it's abstracted here, into the younger man's arm and elbow. Hi. And uh, this is a child with waxed wings. I have to say a lot of people think this child is older than he is, but uh, that may be my drawing technique. And, uh, interesting reactions from people in terms of what they perceive the metaphoric imagery is of the, the wing and the, the wax and the cord and all that sort of thing. The most interesting, for different reasons, reaction to that was last Sunday at the open house, which preceded this one, a co-worker came up from the library who's a pilot. You get a pilot looking at wings and you're gonna get like <laughs> interesting reaction. She says, waxed wings, these wings are not going to fly. And then she starts going from an aeronautical perspective. Anyway, it was funny. Um, moving back to the works over here, this is uh, two women from the uprising, a, a widely reproduced famous photo was after their capture and before their, shortly before their execution. And uh, in the border area is uh, the lyrics in Hebrew for Hatikva, the Israeli national anthem. So the, the symbolism of the piece is supposed to be from ashes to rebirth. The ZOB, which you see on the bottom down here, is the uh, Polish letters for the, the Jewish fighting organization. Uh, Zedowska Organa, Organizja Zedowa, excuse my Polish pronunciation. This is a child, child sitting uh, on the sidewalk. Above it we have uh, Hannah Bronstein's shop sign for manicure. And 
a lot of people have particularly liked this one because of its, aside from the aesthetic imagery of it and the painted frame and all that, the, the um, huma humanness and showing the everyday aspects of life in the ghetto as they proceeded at least for as long as they could. Um, above it is Rubenstatten, who was a, uh, a street performer, like a mime in the ghetto, uh, perished at Treblinka in the summer of 42. He uh, was wearing like mime types of clothes, shiny boots, tapered pants, fancy belt buckle, western style shirt with snap zipper, a beret, an ear to ear grin in the photo, his arm out. And uh, I was just struck uh, when I came across the photo at YIVO, uh, also last June, 93, that this man, what did he do in the face of the adversity which was happening all around him? People were dying on the streets of starvation and disease. People were being pulled off, taken to the Umschlagplatz, where they were you know, trained off to Jablinka or other death camps, Majdanek and others.